Former Senator J.V. Ejercito appeared in today's Senate Committee on Public Services hearing to clarify some provisions of the Republic Act 11229 or the Child Safety in Motor Vehicles Act, which he principally sponsored at the Senate. Ejercito pointed out that bringing of child car seats when riding public utility vehicles such as taxis and transport network vehicle services are not, are not mandatory, though encouraged. Section 9 of the law, commonly known as the Child Car Seat Law, states that the DOTR shall conduct a study first and recommend to Congress the use of child restraint systems in public utility vehicles. Optional to at hindi po mandatory kung kayo ay sasakay ng taxis or mga grab. May nagkaroon po tuloy ng confusion, ng outrage dahil sa kakulungan sa informasyon. Sinabi po nila, i-implement na kagad kinabukasan, gayong hindi pa alam ng, ng taong bayan kung ano ba ang ibig sabihin po nito. In, ang problema po ay hindi po yung batas, no? kundi ang, ang plan ng implementasyon. The Department of Transportation admits there they could have done more in the preparation for the implementation of the law if not for the pandemic. We also recognized when we were supposed to have a seminar last March 19, the, the said, uh, 2020 po, Madam Chair, it was uh, so it was cancelled for due the due to the fact that uh, we were already in lockdown at that time. The DOTR reiterates that they will focus first on information dissemination before fully implementing the law. The agency also suggested to the Senate to pass a measure that will formally defer the implementation of the child car seat law. Meanwhile, some senators have urged the, Depart the Transportation Department, along with the Land Transportation Office, to suspend its private motor vehicle inspection system, or PMVIS, for now, while the country is still battling a pandemic. According to some local authorities, they were also not consulted by the LTO before implementing the program. It's unfair na in-implement nila na walang consultation ng local governments. The cost of inspection and inspection, ma'am, is really burdensome to our people. Ang dami mga nanonood ng trabaho, ang dami mga ngayong panahon, hindi ko na nangangailangan ng assistance of the government, and then ita timing pa natin. Ngayon, ang pag-implement nito, I think, I think government must be sensitive enough on the plight of our people. Wag naman sa panahong ito. There were also complaints from car owners against some motor vehicle inspection centers such as inaccurate results, absence of technical experts, and instances where they have to go back several times after failing the tests. So dito po nakita ko, sabi ko, parang kung gusto kang ibagsak, pwede. Kung gusto kang ipasa, pwede. Kawawa naman po kung yung mga kababayan natin na uh, lalo na tamang-tama lang yung ginagastos nila sa testing, bumabagsak, pabalik-balik. LTO Chief Assistant Secretary Edgar Galvante defended the program, noting that private motor vehicle inspection centers were established to ensure the roadworthiness of cars and lowered the risks of road accidents. He adds they have already suggested to slash the inspection fee, which costs 1,500 to 1,800 pesos. Parang naging reference sa uh, price lang po yun. At... Uh... In fact, uh, in our discussion with the owners of the MBICs, tinit, uh, sinasuggest po namin na kung pwedeng ibaba pa, considering na uh, yun nga po sa panahong ngayon, eh, talagang uh, medyo mahirap pong kitain ang halagang yun. But some senators said there is a possibility that there are individuals who could be making a profit out of the program. Ibig sabihin, niro-roll out na ninyo itong um, proseso na ito with only 23 centers, which by the way, we don't even know how you had come up with giving licenses to those 23 centers. That's why I would like transparency here. Sino mga may-ari ng center na yan? 